In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. <coughs> Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace and good hope to men at all times and forever. Amen. Amen. Bless all my Lord. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, holy, holy, holy are you. Cry to you, holy, holy, holy are you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, as in heaven so on earth. Give us the bread of our need this day, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And bring us not into trial, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, holy, holy, holy are you, our Father in heaven. Heaven and earth are full of the greatness of your glory. Angels and men cry to you, holy, holy, holy are you. Let us pray, peace be with us. Strengthen, O our Lord and our God, our weaknesses by your compassion, that we may administer the holy mysteries, which have been given for the renewal and salvation of our weak nature, through the mercies of beloved Son, our Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. I will exalt you, my Lord the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will exalt you, my Lord the King. Hallelujah. And I will bless your name forever and ever. Hallelujah. Every day I will bless you and I will praise your name forever. Hallelujah. Great is our Lord and praised exceedingly. Hallelujah. There is no limit to his greatness. Hallelujah. Generation after generation. They shall tell of your works, hallelujah. And they shall show forth your mightiness, hallelujah. And they shall tell of the power of your fearfulness, hallelujah. And they shall recount your mighty deeds, hallelujah. And they shall tell of the fearfulness of your power, hallelujah. And I shall recount your greatness, hallelujah. The commemoration of your many any graces, hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. From everlasting <coughs> into everlasting, amen and amen, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray, peace be with us. Before the glorious throne of your majesty and my Lord, the high and exalted chair of your honor, the fearful judgment seat of the intensity of your love, the absolving altar which your direction established in the place and the presence of your glory. We, your people, and the shape of your pasture, with thousands of cherubim who sing hallelujah to you, and ten thousands of seraph menachims who minister to you, do kneel, worship, give thanks, and praise at all times, our Lord of all. Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. 
For you are a priest forever. The high priest of our confession is Jesus the great King, who through his precious body and blood absolves our debts. In the likeness of Melchizedek, the high priest of our confession is Jesus the great King, who through his precious body and blood absolves our debts. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, you who are more glorious than all, higher than all, and exalted far above all, keep your church by your compassion, and save her children through your cross. Peace be with us. And when, O oh our Lord and our God, the pleasant fragrance of the delight of your love is wafted forth upon us, and our souls are enlightened by the knowledge of your truth, may we be made worthy to receive the revelation of your beloved one from heaven. And there may we give you thanks and praise you without ceasing in your crown church, which is full of all aids and good things, for you are the Lord and creator of all. Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. In the worshipful and glorious name of your glorious Trinity, <clears throat> may this incense which we place in your honor be blessed. And may be for absolution, O creator of the life fruits and pleasant aromas, O Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May Christ make to delight in his kingdom, accept your service by the grace of his compassion. Amen. Amen. You, O Lord of all, we confess. And you, Jesus Christ, we glorify. For you are the quickener of our bodies. And you the Saviour of our souls. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and Amen. You, O Lord of all, we confess. And you, Jesus Christ, we glorify. For you are the quickener of our bodies. And you are the Saviour of our souls. Let us pray, peace be with us. In truth, O my Lord, you are the quickener of our bodies, and you are the good saver of our souls and a constant guardian of our lives. And to you, my Lord, we are indebted to give thanks, worship and praise at all times, Lord of all, forever. Amen. Lift up your voice, all you people, and glorify the living God. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. From everlasting and to everlasting, Amen and Amen. Holy God, holy mighty, Mighty and immortal, whose will dwells and rests content in the saints. Turn, O oh my Lord, and pity and have mercy upon us, as you were accustomed to that all times, O Lord of all. 
Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Be seated in silence to listen to the book of Deuteronomy, my brethren. Bless, O oh my Lord. May God, the Lord of all, strengthen you, make you wise in his holy teaching. By the grace of his compassion, amen. Amen. Reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 16, to chapter 6, verse 3. Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long, and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder... You shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear wit false witness against your neighbour, you shall not covet your neighbour's wife, and you shall not desire your neighbour's house, his field, his male servant, his female servant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbour's. These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly in the mountain from the midst of the fire, the cloud, and the thick darkness with a loud voice. And he added, no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. So it was when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, that you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, surely the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God speaks with man yet he still lives. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of the fire as we have and lived? You go near and hear all that the Lord our God may say and tell us all that the Lord our God says to you and we will hear and do it. Then the Lord heard the voice of your words when you spoke to me, and the Lord said to me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken to you. They are right in all that they have spoken. Oh, that they had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep all my commandments, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Go and say to them, Return to your tents. But as for you, stand here by me, and I will speak to you all the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which you shall teach them, that they may observe them in the land which I am giving them to, pos to possess. Therefore, you shall be careful to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left, you shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that he may be well with you, and that you may multiply, multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Stand for the prayer of Shuraiah. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him will he, him will he instruct in the way that he chooses. His soul shall abide in favour. And his seed shall possess the land. The mind of the Lord is toward those who fear him. And he makes known to them his covenant. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. From everlasting and to everlasting and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Let us pray. Peace be with us. Enlighten, O oh our Lord and our God, the impulses of our thoughts, to listen attentively and understand the pleasant hearing of your life given divine commandments. Grant us, by your grace and mercy, that may gave from them, profit, love, hope, and salvation, which are useful for the soul and the body. And may we sing continual praise without ceasing at all times, O Lord of all, <coughs> Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Paul, the Apostle of Jesus Christ, his epistle to the Corinthians, my bless, O my Lord. May Christ make you wise in his holy teaching and make you as a beautiful mirror to those who attentively listen to you. Amen. Bless, O my Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in the presence am lowly among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold that with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some, who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh, for though we, walked in, we walk in flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look at things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ, even so we are Christ's. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification and not for your destruction. I shall not be ashamed, lest I seem to terrify you by letter. For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily appearance is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such a person consider this, that what we are in word by letter when we are absent, such we will also be indeed when we are present. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which especially includes you. For we are not overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you. For it was to you that we came with the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things beyond measure, that is, in other men's labor, but having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord, for not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. Glory be to the Lord of Paul. Glory be to the Lord of Paul. Make us wise in your law, enlighten our thoughts with your knowledge. Sanctify our souls with your truth and grant us to be obedient to your words and to fulfill your commandments at all times, O Lord of all. Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. The pleasant aroma, my Lord, which wafted forth from you at the moment when Mary the sinner poured the fragrant oil upon your head. May that be mixed with this incense, which we place for your honor for the pardon of our debts and sins. O Lord of all. Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Alleluia.
Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the abundance of your mercies, blot out my sins. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. For I know my transgressions, and my sins are always before me. to the Son and to the Holy Spirit from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and Amen. according to the preaching of Mark. Glory be to Christ our Lord. 
Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of the disciples eat bread with defiled, that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to, to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things you do. And he said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, If a man says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is korban, that is, a gift to God, then you, you, long, you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition which you have handed down. And many such things you do. And when he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand, there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. When he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from the outside cannot defile him, because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods? And he said, What comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. Glory be to Christ our Lord. Glory be to Christ our Lord. Let us all stand up as it is befitting with joy and rejoicing. Let us beseech and say, <laughs> Our Lord have mercy upon us. Our Lord have mercy upon us. Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, we beseech you. Our Lord have mercy upon us. Our Savior and our caretaker and the supplier of all things, we beseech you. Our Lord have mercy upon us. For the tranquility, harmony, and continued existence of the whole world and of all the churches, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. For our country and all countries, and for all those who are dwelling in them in the faith, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. For a moderate climate and the fruitfulness of the year, for the yield of the fruits and for the establishment of the whole world, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. For the welfare of our Holy Fathers, Margi Vargas Catholicos Patriarch, Marmilas Metropolitan, Marbinyam and Bishop, and all those who serve under them, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. For Orthodox presbyters and deacons, and for all our brethren in Christ, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. O merciful God, who by his mercies governs all, 
all, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. O oh, he who is rich in his mercy and overflowing in his compassion, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. O oh, he who by his nature is good, and the giver of all good things, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. O he who does not desire the death of a sinner, but that she, he should repent from his iniquity and live, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. O he who is glorified in heaven, and worshipped on earth, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. O he who by nature possesses immortality and dwells in a resplendent light, we beseech you. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. Save us all, O Christ our Lord, by your grace, and increase among us your tranquility and peace, and have mercy upon us. Our Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us commit ourselves and one another to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. To you, O Lord, our God. Unto you, O Lord, God of hosts, we supplicate in us. Fulfill with us your grace and pour forth for us your gift. And may the mercies and compassion of your Godhead be for the pardon of the debts of your people and for the, for the forgiveness of the sins of all the flock of your pasture, whom you have chosen for yourself in your grace and mercies. O good one and lover of mankind, Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Bless all my Lord. Bow down your heads for the imposition of hands and receive the blessing. And grant unto us, my Lord, in your compassion, they may all together equally all the days of our lives please your Godhead with good works of righteousness which may content and satisfy the glorious will of your Lordship. And may we be made worthy with the aid of your grace to lift up to you praise, honor, thanksgiving and worship at all times, O Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Whoso has not received baptism, let him depart. Whoso has not accepted the sign of life, let him depart. Whoso does not receive it, let him depart. Go here and see the door. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Upon the holy altar, may there be a commemoration of the Virgin Mary, the mother of Christ. From everlasting and to everlasting, amen and amen. O apostles of the Son, and friends of the only begotten, pray that there may be tranquility in creation. Let all the people say Amen and Amen, your commemoration, O oh, our Father, is upon the holy altar. With the just who were victorious and the martyrs who have been crowned. Behold, the departed have fallen asleep in your hope that in the glorious resurrection you may raise them up in glory. 
Let us pray, peace be with us. May God, the Lord of all, be content with your service and adorn you with every beauty, enrich with every diamond of his gift forever. Amen. Amen. Bless oh my Lord. Let us pray. Peace be with us. Our hearts, being sprinkled and cleansed from an evil conscience, may we be made worthy to enter into the Holy of Holies, the high and exalted and in purity, excellence and holiness, May we stand before your holy altar and offer to you spiritual and rational sacrifices in the true faith. But you who are good, do not anger forever, nor forever keeps his wrath. Turn your face away from my sins and blot out all my foolishness. By the great multitude of your mercifulness, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. In the truth, therefore, which is undivided, we, we believe in one God, the, the Father Lord, Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the firstborn of all creations, who was begotten of his Father before all worlds and not made, true God of true God, of one essence with his Father, by whose hands the worlds were established and all things were created, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and became man, was conceived and born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered and was crucified in the days of Pontius Pilate, and was buried and rose on the third day, as it is written, and ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of his Father, and shall come again to judge the dead and the living, and in one Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, the life-giving Spirit, and in one holy and apostolic and Catholic Church, and we confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins in the resurrection of our bodies and in the life forever and ever. Amen. May God, the Lord of all, be with us all in us all. By his grace and mercy, it's forever. Amen. Amen. Listen, my Lord, my brothers, pray for me. May Christ hear your prayers and be satisfied with your supplications and accept your oblation by his grace and mercies forever. Amen. Let us pray. Peace be with us. Pray for the memorial of our fathers, the Catholic Goyen bishops, and of all the priests and deacons and young men and virgins, and of all those who have died and departed from this world in the true faith, and of all our fathers and brethren. By whom you are well pleased and reconciled to give the sins of all men. Amen. Bless our my Lord. Bless our my Lord. My brothers, pray for me that this oblation may be perfected at my hands. May God, Lord the Lord, Lord of all, Lord strengthen, strengthen you to fulfill his will. And may he accept your oblation, and may he be pleased with your sacrifice which you offer for us, for yourself, and for the four regions of the world. By the grace of his compassion forever, amen. For all our sons and daughters, and all the faithful Christ, loving kings, and of all the prophets and apostles, and of all the martyrs and confessors here and in every place. By whom you are well pleased and reconciled to give the sins of all men. Amen. Bless O oh my Lord. Bless O oh my Lord. Pray for me, my brothers and my beloved, that I may be deemed worthy to offer before Christ our Lord this living and holy sacrifice for myself and for the whole of the Holy Church, by the grace of his compassion, forever, amen. May God, the Lord of all, be pleased with your sacrifice and accept your oblation which you offer for us and for yourself 
by the grace of his mercies forever. Amen. That God may crown them all at the resurrection from among the dead and give us with them a good hope, a portion and inheritance and life in the kingdom of heaven. This oblation is offered for all the living and the dead, may be accepted for my sinfulness, before the fearful judgment seat of your mercy, O Lord, with confidence. Amen. Bless O my Lord. May Christ confirm your words and accept the fruits of your lips, and may he absolve the debts and sins of all who listen to you. Amen. And may this oblation be accepted with confidence. And may it be sanctified by the word of God and by the Holy Spirit, that it may be a benefit to us and salvation and life forever and ever in the kingdom of heaven by the grace of Christ. Bless him, my Lord. Bless him, my Lord. Bless him, my Lord. My brothers, pray for me. May Christ hear your prayers. May Christ receive your oblation. And may Christ adorn your priesthood in the kingdom of heaven. And may he be pleased with this sacrifice which you offer for yourself and for us and for the entire world, which looks for and awaits his grace and his mercy forever. Amen. That with perfect love and with true faith we may administer your gift towards us. Amen. Bless our my Lord. Now and at all times and forever and ever. Amen. Be with you. And, and with you. And with your spirit. Give peace one to another in the love of Christ. For all Catholic high bishops, presbyters, and deacons, and the whole company of the departed from the assembly of the church, and for the life and tranquility of the world, and for the crown of the year, that he may be blessed and perfected by your grace. And for every child of the church, who is worthy of the reception of this oblation which is before you, and for all your servants and handmaidens who stand before you at this hour, for all of them and for all of us, may this oblation be accepted forever. Amen. Let us all confess, beseech, and supplicate the Lord in purity and lamentation. All stand aright and behold those things that are being performed in the fearful mysteries which are being consecrated. The priest has drawn near to pray that by his mediation peace may be multiplied unto you. Cast down your eyes and lift up your minds to heaven. Watchfully and diligently beseech and supplicate at this hour. Let no man dare to speak and whosoever prays, let him pray in his heart. In silence and in fear, stand and pray, peace be with us. May the pleasant fragrance, O our Lord and our God, which we offer you <clears throat> before your holy altar, within your glorious temple, be pleasing to you. And may it be for the gladness of your holy name and for the pardon of your servants and of your flock. Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May Christ strengthen you to do his will continually. May Christ make your priesthood shine in the kingdom of heaven. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit with us all now and at all times and forever and ever. Amen. Let your minds be above unto you, O God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Israel. O glorious King. The oblation is offered to God, the Lord of all. It is fitting and right, peace be with us. Bless her, my Lord, bless her, my Lord, bless her, my Lord. My brothers, pray for me. May Christ be your prayers. May Christ receive your oblation, and may Christ adorn your priesthood in the kingdom of heaven. And may he be pleased with this sacrifice, which you offer for yourself and for us, and for the entire world, which looks for and awaits his grace and his mercy forever. Amen. And with the holy cherubim and the spiritual seraphim, offering worship to your Lordship. Amen. Bless O oh my Lord. While crying and praising without ceasing, and calling one to another and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and full of his praises and of the nature of his being and of the excellence of his glorious to the loneliness of our weak nature in the abundant mercies of your grace. Amen. Bless O oh my Lord. And for all your aids and graces towards us, we will lift up to you praise, honor, thanksgiving and worship now and at all times and forever and ever. Amen. Pray in your minds. Peace be with us. Haleba Maria Lani Pshimena Mota Sogule Hashati Wena Mota Mata 
ساری را حاغر لطویرا هل تی تدم شیخا قور لنطیرا قیم تا دانیده تام لسپیرا شپیر دوباره بیت پای شخیرا شغلی شام شیخا البردا خشکانا لبا خشانا دیگر انسان آبرانا قابل ماریا لاها قربانا تپشل مقروا با آدوا خنانا ایشو پاروقا گانو خدی خویت کیانات نشوتو خشاب قبل ویت کاسا ماری را دموت آشتی ویت هی وی بقیم تا قاتان مل پیوید هل با ماریا لانید بشی منا به موتا تسوگوله خشاتی ونا those have been signed with the living sign of holy baptism. May your grace be upon us, O Lord, even as we have waited for you. Our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, in silence and in all, be standing and praying, peace be with us. And may there come, O oh my Lord, your Holy Spirit, and may he rest upon this oblation of your servants. May he bless it and hallow it, and may be to us, O oh my Lord, for the absolution of debts, the forgiveness of sins, the great open resurrection from the dead, and for new life in the kingdom of heaven, with all been well pleasing before you. And for all this great and marvellous dispensation towards us, we will give you thanks and glorify without ceasing in your church, which is saved by the precious blood of your Christ with open mouths and revealed faces, with open mouths and revealed faces. Amen. Bless our my Lord. While lifting up glory and on and thanksgiving and worship to your living and holy and life-giving name, now and at all times and forever and ever. Amen. O oh Christ, the peace of those above and the great tranquility of those below, absolve the debts and sins by the church ranking. Father in heaven, holy by nature, deem our soul to be good in your pasture. May your kingdom come and all 
Rest upon your church that sings you praises. We all beseech you, raising our voices, pardon faults and sins, help us with choices. Mercy. Lord and our Savior, your powerful cross is our protector. Bless her, my Lord, bless her, my Lord, bless her, my Lord. The mercifulness of your grace, O oh, our Lord and our God, draws us near to these glorious, holy, life-giving and divine mysteries. Though we are not worthy, in truth, oh, my Lord, we are not worthy. Have pity on us, O oh my Lord, though we are not worthy. Through our frailty, because of our many sins. Baruch Mar, Baruch Mar, Baruch Mar. Karwalan, Maran Walahan, Marachmanutha, Taibutha, Sadraze Halin, Shwiche, Kandisha, Machiane Walahaye, Kevla Shawina, Bashra Maranla. Bless her, my Lord, bless her, my Lord, bless her, my Lord. The mercifulness of your grace, so our Lord and our God, draws us near to these glorious, holy, life-giving and divine mysteries. Though we are not worthy, in truth, oh my Lord, we Worthy, have pity on us, O oh my Lord, though we are not worthy. Through our frailty, because of our many sins. See, therefore, that it is I. I am the bread which came down from on high. Our Saviour said to his disciples, Whoso in love comes and does receive me, surely lives in me and gains the kingdom. Bless the Lord of his angels, cherubs and seraphs and the archangels, in fear and trembling stand at the altar. And behold the priest who breaks and divides the body of Christ to remit our sins. For the Lord shall hold his hand. Fire in the coal Isaiah did kiss, though his lips unscorched, his sins were absolved. Fire in the bread mortals do receive, 
saving their bodies and burning their sins. He whose hands are clean and chosen in his heart, when the priest enters before the altar, his hands he extends purely to heaven and calls the spirits coming from on high, hallowing the body and blood of Christ. Open unto me the gates of righteousness. He who in mercy opens to sinners his doors and calls them to draw near to him. Lord, open the door of mercy to us, we will sing you praise in the day and night. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit with us all now and at all times and forever and ever. Let us all in awe and reverence draw near to the mysteries of the precious body and blood of our Saviour. With a pure heart and with true faith let us remember his passion and consider his resurrection. For the only begotten of God for our sake took of mankind a mortal body and a rational, intelligent and immortal soul. And by his life-giving laws and his holy commandments he has brought us out of error to the knowledge of the truth. And after all his dispensation for us, he the first fruits of our nature was tried on the cross. He rose from the dead and was taken up into heaven. He has delivered to us his holy mysteries that in them we might commemorate all his grace towards us. Let us therefore with overflowing love and with a humble will receive the gift of everlasting life. With pure prayer and manifold sorrow let us partake in the Mysteries of the church and in the hope of repentance. While we turn from our foolishness and grieve over our sins and asking mercy and forgiveness from God the Lord of all. We pardon the foolishness of our fellows. Lord God, absolve the sins and transgressions of your servants. And we purify our consciences from divisions and strife. Lord God, absolve the sins and transgressions of your servants. While our souls being cleared from anger and enmity, and absolve the sins and transgressions of your servants. Let us take the holy sacrament and be hallowed by the Holy Spirit. Lord God, absolve the sins and transgressions of your servants. In the harmony and concord of our minds, let us receive in peace one with another, the communion of the mysteries. Lord God, absolve the sins and transgressions of your servants, that they may be to us, O oh my Lord, for the resurrection of our bodies and the salvation of our souls, and to life forever and ever. Let, Let us pray. pray. Peace be with us. And make us worthy, O our Lord and our God, to continue with our blame stand before you, with a pure heart and confidence, 
and with that liberty which is from you given to us in mercy, they may all equally call to you. of you and supplicate the mercifulness of your grace. Do not, O oh my Lord, do not, O oh my Lord, bring us into trial, but save and deliver us from the evil one and his host. From the evil one and his host. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the might, the strength, the meaning in heaven and on earth, now and at all times and forever. To the Holy One's fitting perfection. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit forever. the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a blessed Sunday morning to you. We pray that you are staying safe, that you are well, and that your spirit in the Lord is, is strengthened, is growing, is moving forward during this time. Today we're celebrating the fourth Sunday of summer in this liturgical season, and before uh, we have a look at uh, the chosen reading for today. I'd just like to share with you a few announcements. The first announcement is a recurring announcement regarding the Marmilis Academic Scholarship. Uh, this scholarship, the purpose of this program is to financially assist high-performing students, both already enrolled at San Jose College and also prospective students. The scholarship will be awarded to applicants that have consistently demonstrated exceptional academic results and involvement in extracurricular activities, as well as community engagement. Successful applicants will have their tuition fees covered as follows. Year six for 2021 will have years seven and eight covered. Year eight in 2021 will have years nine and 10 covered. And year 10 in 2021 will have years 11 and 12 covered. For more information, an application, you can contact the, the college uh, via phone or via the website. And the closing date is the 20th of August, so there's a few weeks remaining. And those who have already applied for the coming years, so 2022, uh, need not apply. The other announcement, just a reminder that uh, every Sunday at 8 p.m., uh, St. Peter and Paul is hosting a, a book club. A book club, it's basically an online ministry where you can um, log on through the Zoom link that's on Facebook and just join uh, with our brothers and sisters as we read the lives of the saints and we reflect on their lives. So it, it's, um, it's a good way to spend some time on the Sunday evening and to uh, begin your week as well. So reflecting on the lives of the saints, very needful for us always, and even more during this difficult period. So please join us and let your share it with, with others. Everyone's welcome to join. Lastly, um, you would have heard by now, uh, his beatitude has um, announced that 
we will be commencing the, the fast of St. Mary. So this fast is for, uh, we, we honor the Virgin for, for the two-week period, and it's the commemoration of her falling asleep. Usually, uh, this fast is, is, it's an optional fast, and it still is optional, but it's usually done, uh, um, you know, as, as a private, as a, as a personal devotion. But in this one, his beatitude is urging us to do it as a communion one, that we come together and that we fast together. And as I said, it's usually done as a private, personal fast where somebody is, is offering or asking something for them personally. But this one, we're asking that we, we ask something for the good of everyone, not just a personal fast, but a communal fast, and namely uh, for the crisis of this COVID situation that has been with us for close to a year and a half now, if not longer. And... Um, you know, think of it, I guess, like this. When King Solomon uh, was, uh, when uh, he encountered God, when he entered into his monarchy, and God asked him, what do you want? Make a request and I'll give you. And he selflessly, not selfishly, he selflessly asked for wisdom. Not that he can be smarter than everyone, but that he can govern his people rightly. And the Lord gave him that, but also he blessed him with other things that he didn't ask for, because because you've asked for this, for the sake of your people, I'll give you everything else for yourself. So I think this can be applied the same, that if we come selflessly, and not that it's selfishly to, to ask for some for ourselves, but in this case, if we all communally, selflessly ask for the same thing, I'm sure God will bless us with other things as well that we personally want deep inside. So may the Lord hear your prayers, accept your fast during this time. May we encourage one another to, to take up this fast, which we can be begin today, and we'll go for, for two weeks. Um, now, in saying that, this Friday is the Feast of the Transfiguration, so one of the major feasts of the Lord. The churches will be celebrating this uh, again uh, through... Um, uh, uh, a live broadcast, but because it is uh, a feast day, that, that day is loosened. That day is loosened. So on the Friday, we can be loosened from that fast to, to celebrate the transfiguration, but then again, we go back to the fast the following day on the Saturday. So we encourage you all to, to um, please take up this fast, petition the Blessed Virgin Mary that our voice may be pleasing to the Lord as her voice is, just at that event in Canaan at the wedding when she said, they have no wine. And Christ heard her petition and, and he brought forward that miracle for the sake of the love for his mother. And so may our voices be mingled with the Virgin that through our prayer and our fasting that God will hear as is pleasing to him, as the voice of the Virgin is, is, is pleasing to him. From today's scripture readings, beloved, I've chosen to speak about the lection reading from Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 16 to chapter 3, chapter 6, verse 3. And it, it, it's a continuation from last week's reading where we hear about Moses retelling, recounting, the Ten Commandments. Last week, we only got up to the first four, but this week, we, we hear uh, from Commandments 5, honor your father and mother, all the way through to the end. But that's not all. We hear about also Israel's reaction to hearing the law and how they, they urged Moses, they elected Moses to, to, for him to go and to continue hearing the law because they were afraid, they were terrified, encountering God in, in such a way that they asked him to, to go in their stead and to hear the remainder of the law, what else God was going to hand down and that Moses would pass on to them. So I've chosen uh, this uh, reading because I think it's quite relevant for us today in the sense that it is... 
a recovery of God's law. Mo, uh, God was, uh, sorry, Moses was re-inducting Israel into God's law. They were to recover the vision of what God had wanted from them. It didn't happen twice. God did not call Moses twice and give him law. He gave it to him once. But it's a retelling. It's a retelling. And Moses saw it fitting to retell the law at the time when Israel was on the verge of entering the promised land. After their trial through the wilderness, a common trial, he thought it fitting for them to refocus, regather, regain the vision of God's law for them and how to live by it. Because they had lost an understanding of God's moral expectation of them. And so after we hear the commandments, we hear also, as I said, that Israel was troubled. They encountered, and Moses was telling them how you encountered God on Mount Sinai. There was darkness. There was a consuming fire. And you were terrified, it's saying. You were terrified that you saw the great fire and you heard the Ten Commandments and that you said that you were amazed that we have not perished. Moses quotes them, saying, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire, and we have seen this day God speak with man, and man still live. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord God any more, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and still have lived? So the great reverence for God carried the idea that an encounter with him would be life-threatening. They were amazed that they could be in the presence of God and hear the commandments and see the fire and still live. Now, upon considering these words for us today, beloved, I say that the opposite is true for us. As Christians, we are not terrified to hear the voice of the Lord. Instead, we seek the voice of the Lord. We indeed seek to live. As Israel was afraid hearing that they may die, we are seeking the voice of the Lord to live. This is why before the gospel is read, the church sings the hymn of the faithful. And one of the beautiful stanzas from there we sing is, this is the voice that when the dead hear, they come to life. So not only are we talking about at the general resurrection, when Christ will return, and he will say, come forth, as he said to Lazarus, and all will rise. But also, when we're dead in our trespasses and our sins, when we hear the voice of the Lord, we come to life. We seek to encounter his words, his very presence, because in them we find life. Today we seek to hear the voice of God, beloved, so that we may live. And throughout the reading, we see that this is also implied. This is also implied in a sense that when God's commandments were given, firstly, when uh, the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother, it was given with a promise, with a blessing, that it may be well with you, that your days may be prolonged on the earth. So there, there was a blessing, you know, a sense of a long life, living to come with honoring the fifth commandment. But not only that, when, when it was God responding to Moses, he summed up all the commandments, saying that if I, I he says, oh, I wish that they may, you know, keep my commandments, that they may live, that they may live. And so there is a connection and understanding with keeping the, the commandments of the Lord and, and living. A 
Although Israel, although Israel was uh, scared to hear the voice of the Lord, due to that awesome and that fearful sight of the consuming fire, at the same time, they knew that the words were valuable for them. Hence, why they requested Moses to stay on, on their behalf. And that he could relate to them further the law which God will hand down. And this is why they say, Go near, and hear all our Lord God will say, and speak to us all that the Lord our God will speak to you. And we will hear and do it. And the Lord heard your, vo- your words when you spoke to me, and the Lord said to me, I have heard the words of these people which they have spoken to me. They have rightly said all that they have spoken. Oh, that they may have such a mind as this always, to fear me, to keep all my commandments, that it might go well with them and with their children forever. So God found their response favorable. It pleased him that Israel was showing an appropriate amount of fear and reverence towards his commandments, his law, his teaching. However, at the same time, one can detect some sadness in God's words in saying that this would not be the case always when he said, oh, that they have such a mind as this always to fear me and to keep all my commandments that I might go well with them and with their children forever. And due to this, Moses deemed it necessary to reiterate the law to them, to reiterate the Sinai encounter because it wouldn't happen again. It was the time before they would enter the promised land they needed to be reinstated, reinducted in the law of God that they may live by it and they may be well with them in the land in which they're about to take. And so, for Israel, as I say, it was a common struggle, one that they all went through, their journey in the wilderness and the trials that they faced. But they had failures. They had failures during that time. Vices... Uh, crept in to their uh, spiritual life. Hence why they didn't uh, obey the voice of the Lord and why there was judgment, punishment, and why a new generation would enter into the promised land. And so they lost an understanding of what God expected for them. Hence why they need to recapture, regain the vision of God's law. And so the connection for us today, beloved, is for ourselves to salvage our salvation during this time, this 18-month period. The whole spotlight has been on what's going on in the world. The whole world is affected. Everything is affected from A to Z. From A to Z. But we have to personally reflect on our lives that we are not like Israel. We are going through a common struggle as well but let not vices creep into our own personal life, our spiritual life, and render us unable to uphold the law of God. We need to reconnect with God. We need to recapture our vision, beloved, what what God expects from us. We need to use this time, this isolation period. We find a balance in how we live. We have a a healthy balance of um, exercise, if it's some entertainment, spiritual life as well, connecting with others, connecting with God. We need to harness this time, beloved. God's law has not changed. What Israel received on Mount Sinai, what was reinducted to them before they entered the promised land, what we are reflecting on today has not changed. God expects the same law from us. In fact, he expects more from us because Christ did not abolish those commandments. In fact, he elevated them. He elevated 
what Israel was uh, given. And so may we use this time, as I said, to hear his voice, to recapture the vision, to have a mind and a heart to, to do the things that he expects of us, that it may go well with us in the land in which we are living and also in the land to come, the next life. God bless you. Amen. Bless am my Lord by your command. Our oh, good God and full of mercy, our oh, good God and full of mercy, whose grace and compassion are abundant upon all. Pour in my Lord the kindness and pleasant love of these servants of yours, and transform them in a hope of renewal to life repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation, and purify them in your kindness from the blemish of the flesh and of the spirit. Strengthen the hope of their belief by the help of your grace. Make straight the gates of their deeds and the paths of righteousness. Make them to rejoice with the saints in your kingdom, in the confirmation of the hope of their faith, of the adoption of sonship and the joy of absolving mysteries. Strengthen them by the aid of your mercy to observe your commandments and to fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and glorify your holy name, Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. 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 Let us pray, peace be with us. The grace of the Holy Spirit be with you and with us, for the partakers hereof in the kingdom of heaven forever. Amen. With you and with us and with the partakers hereof in the kingdom of heaven, praise you, the living God. The of grace of our life giver Lord Jesus Christ be perfected in mercy is with us all Amen Let us, 
Let us all. Let us all, therefore, who by the gift of grace of the Holy Spirit have drawn near and been made worthy and have participated in reception of this glorious, holy, life-giving and divine mysteries. Let us all give thanks to one accord and glorify God, their giver. Glory be to him for his unspeakable gift. Let us pray, peace be with us. It is fitting, and my Lord of the days, it is fitting, and my Lord of the days. And it is right at all times and proper at every hour to give thanks and worship and praise the fearful name of your majesty. For by your grace, O my Lord, you have made worthy the weak nature of mortal man to sanctify and name the spiritual beings and to partake in the mysteries of your gift and to take the light and the sweetness of your words and to lift up voices of praise and of thanksgiving to exalted Godhead at all time, Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Bless us, my Lord. May Christ our God, our Lord, our King, our Saviour, life given and forgiver of our sins, who by His grace and mercy has deemed us worthy to receive His precious and sanctifying body and blood. May he grant us to please him in our thoughts, words, deeds, and action. And may this pledge which we have taken and are taking be to us, O my Lord, for the absolution of debts and the forgiveness of sins, for the great open resurrection from the dead, for new life in the kingdom of heaven. With all being well pleased before me in your grace and mercy forever. Amen. 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 Bless O my Lord. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, holy, holy, holy are you, our Father in heaven. Heaven and earth are full of the greatness of your glory. Angels and men cry to you, holy, holy, holy are you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, as in heaven so on earth. Give us the bread of our need this day, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And bring us not into trial, but deliver from evil, for yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. From, from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. of your glory, angels and men cry to you, holy, holy, holy are you. Bless, O oh my Lord. Bless, O oh my Lord, by your command. By the command of Jesus Christ, our Lord, glory to his holy name. May he who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and has invited us to his kingdom and called us and brought us near to his desirable blessings which pass not away, neither depart nor cease. As he promised to us in his life-giving gospel and said to the blessed company of disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, whosoever eats my body and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. And I'll raise him up the last day and he shall not come into judgment, but pass from death unto everlasting life. May he bless our assembly, protect our company, and make our people excellent, which came and took delight in the power of his glorious, holy, life-giving divine mysteries. And with the living son of the cross of our Lord, May you be sealed and protect from all harm, hidden or open, now and at all times, and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Trinity by which were blessed righteous, faithful, and the ancient forefathers. Bless this church and be it blessed now and forever. 
Protected Lord and those who pray in it from all dangers and all harm. Multiply it with all good things like the house of Abraham. And its possessions increase as the house of righteous Job. May it stand strong by the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now and forever. We pray that you have a blessed Sunday, a blessed week. Uh, and remember to start this fast uh, together, uh, praying and beseeching the Lord for the one common petition that he may have mercy upon us and may deliver us from this crisis that has come upon the world. God bless you. May he keep you in his peace.